Gfinity's in its second week. The OPL kicks off. We've got Rocket League and CSGO. You're watching the podium. G'day gamers and welcome to the podium where we take a look at the biggest hits, epic takedowns and classic comebacks from across the world of esports. Two people who are not at E3 but are here on your TV, uh, myself and Mr. Job Gilroy. That's true. Uh, I'm with Bo Uche. Uh, we've, you know, dressed in monochromatic opposite colours this week just to... We took the memo a little too far this time to make Maybe. sure we're Maybe. definitely wardrobe uh, not clashing. Yep. Uh, complimentary, some might say. <laughs> Let's not go too far. Um... Anyway, we've uh, yeah, we're kicking things off with a bit of Gfinity action. It's not going to be all Gfinity this week. No, no, it was week two, so uh, you know we do have other things to talk about. But you know we, we are back into it, which is um, you know last week was a really good launch round, so it was interesting to see where it would go in week two. Um, one of the the matches you really liked was the Melbourne Derby. Yeah, so Avant versus Order, and uh, it went all the way down to the wire, uh, like every single step of the way. The, the CSGO went one way, the Rocket League went another, and then it came down to the Street Fighter, where uh, it went, well, it's a best of seven, it went to round seven, uh, game three, and uh, yeah, well, let's have a look at the clip. All right, just Vero Vessel doesn't want to eat the command grab from Requiem of Fear. No, no he doesn't really need the V-Trigger. Rumors of Ghost in the yellow trunk with his back up against the wall. Oh, oh it might be in. in! There it is! Oh, it's not! Not enough, doesn't have critical oh, on goodness. deck. One yeah, more Requiem of Fear backing off. Rumors of Ghost has got to back off as well. He knows it's his game to lose now. Watch for a walk-up bullhorn. We're going to see. Oh, and no! There it is. And Rumors of Ghost takes it over Requiem of Fear. Woo! And they what a bury. There it is. They're all shaded up. Oh, we esports boys. Rumors of let's Ghost go, let's go. taking it beautifully and gets that win rate. Wow. Six games, six straight wins for Rumors of Ghost now. Well, if you're going to take it down, that's the way to do it, Ryan. I mean, like... a. Uh, a birdie mirror match is maybe not the way a lot of people want to see it go, but uh, it is. There could not be any more even a matchup than uh, two of the best Street Fighter players in the country playing the same character in round three of game seven to decide who wins the week. And uh, yeah, it worked out really well. Yeah, 100%. So now we're into week two, like the, the fanfare of the first week's over. And I know it's still early days, but, but how's the league shaping up in terms of, you know, you're seeing the results that you're expecting? Actually, I'm not, and uh, it's it's one of the weirder things. It's one of my maybe a uh, little bit odder complaints about Gfinity. It's very tough. One, gonna, like I don't know how they're going to solve it, but yeah. uh, it's one of those things where you don't get to find out who is competing until basically the day before. And I'd love to see you know a little bit earlier out. I want to yeah. see maybe on the Thursday of every week, yeah. see who's going to be flying in and who's going to be competing, so that uh, you know people who are you know, attached to certain players, yeah. can get hype for the weekends, uh, and, and people who are hyped for their own team can have some idea of what's going to play out. Yeah, all right, so, and maybe a little consistency week to week so you can get, you know, for those that are newer to the league and get more familiar with the with the players, you know, they're in. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good, like, really good point as well. I mean, yeah, it's, it's all about delivering as much to the spectator as possible, I think. But, uh, but they the are doing hand, a great job of that. They are. They're, yeah. they're doing that really well. And I don't know if you can really lock in who's yeah. going to be there on the Thursday beforehand. I mean, you look at the basketball, sometimes you don't know until they're on the court. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, well, you know, and English Premier League is a good example. Yeah, Champions exactly. League and all the things that are going on, you know, players need to be rested, players have other commitments. You know, it, with the World Cup starting um, this week, I don't know. It, it, but, you know, those kind of things, you yeah. know, it, uh, uh, people come to accept that in the highest level of competitive sport. Can't one on any different uh, with esports. Yeah, exactly, and and yeah. So yeah. so no, but like we're seeing great competition come out of it, and we've been big fans of Gfinity all the way in the lead up. Last week was great. It's good to see that those matches continuing to shine. It's it's awesome to see the competition still there. Yeah. Yeah. So from one of the leagues in its second week to one that's kicking off, OPL's back on our screens. Yes, uh, second league to the sec sorry second week to the second split, and uh, yeah, the OPL is back. And uh, it was a barnstormer a week. It was uh, it was awesome seeing some of the matches. Uh, the the be best one, of course, uh, Dire Wolves, the ch the returning champions, taking on Order, who are you know have been one of the strongest teams throughout the year. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a really good matchup. It was actually really close uh, the entire way through. Both both teams took one game apiece until it came down to the third. Dire Wolves managed to take it out. It could have gone either way, and uh, you know they lost. They lost chippies uh, at the start of the season, and you know they're they're still adjusting to that. So yeah. um, I don't know. 
there's there's an opportunity there for teams to maybe come up and, and take some games off the Die Wolves while they still can. Yeah. Let's have a look at the clip. Uh, we'll just jump straight in. 7,000. Do they hold? Churnfire is still up and he has Smite. The contest yeah. is there. Tally's so low. Yeah, they have to get out of here. That is a bad Baron now. You can see Tally running upwards. Direwolves now have open track to the mid lane turret. Order have to channel recalls. And Order have had control, but Direwolves are playing the side lanes much better. Both times in the last five minutes that these two teams have fought 5v5. They've cancelled. Actually, they've gone back and now Direwolves are like, we're just going to do Baron. Both side lanes have been pushing in. Yes, they start pink board. This is such a bold call from Direwolves. is here with no flash. Has no flash. Can he get in is a big question. It no does vision. not look like it. Ulti gives vision him vision. Is there. No, that's gone. Direwolves pick up Baron. Oh. So there you go. It was a pretty ballsy move. I mean, it's it's one of those things you don't normally... I, I was wondering if I should really include it in the highlights. I mean, it's not action-packed necessarily, but it is a fantastic move. Uh, they, they fake out. Uh, the attack on the base and they returned to the Baron and that gave them all the momentum they needed to actually win the game which is, uh, you know, at the end of the day that is the key defining moment of that matchup. Yeah, like it, it turned the, the the course of the match. Yeah, it turned the table. It, it. it gave them the momentum they needed to actually go out ahead and win. So. Yeah, so we're week one, um, we're back into it. Uh, who do you, ex you know, we know what to expect from these big teams with you know the big players. Who do, you, who do you expect to um, see the most improvement from, from the last time we saw the teams on the field? Because of all the roster changes, uh, they're, they're, there's a huge inject, uh, injection new talent uh, into, the, into the scene this split. So yeah. uh, I think Tectonic, who placed last, Last uh, last split, yeah, they're definitely going to go a lot better. I think they're already going a lot better, and yeah, I think they're going to be actually one to really watch for the rest of the split. So yeah, great. Yeah. Now we're very ANZ esports focused here, but we did see a couple of local teams competing in London in the Rocket League uh, over the weekend. Uh, it's always good to see our, our guys taking it to the world stage. Yeah, absolutely. The Chiefs and Tainted Minds headed over to London to compete in the World Championships. Uh, season five, uh, they did excellent work. I, I thought they they showed up really well. Yeah. Um, they were super entertaining. One of the best things was listening. You could hear the crowd uh, at all times, and they were well behind the Aussies. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I think with good reason. They they play a really entertaining game, and uh, they sort of come in as the underdogs every yeah. single time, and they perform above what people might think. You know? Yeah, and it, you know, it's kind of. Expected uh, from Oceania teams, you know, we we do normally come in as underdogs, but to see them, you know, kind of have as much success as they did was really, really rewarding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they obviously they they didn't win at all. Uh, they they both fell out uh, eventually, but uh, they you know the Chiefs did supremely well. Uh, they managed to get fifth, sixth, tied for fifth, yeah. rather, and uh, and. Tainer Mines managed to uh, managed to put on a really good showing against Team Envious. Uh, who the Chiefs inevitably uh, took out uh, in revenge. Let's have a look at the clip. Uh, United to his own corner. Jake with a response, lost it for Drippe, but Devo off the wall in time. Torsos now up towards the net. Can he find the shot? The pass back down to Torsos. What a beautiful play from Chiefs. Drippe, the absolute creativity. You monster bringing this one back. And it's Torsos, the man of the hour, to finish it off. Yeah, so there you have it. Like I said, it's always good to see Aussie teams doing well on the on the big stage. And and it's you know it's obviously difficult. I mean, it's a twenty four hour flight to get yeah. to London, and uh, yeah, they they can't train against them at all times. It's you know it's one of those things that we always bang on about, but uh, it is getting better, and it's awesome seeing. You know, it's, it takes a team like the Chiefs yeah. uh, to get that experience to rope it all in and yeah. to bring it back. Uh, to Australia, and you know the, the other teams will learn from there. Yeah, well, like we were saying in an earlier segment with the with the um, with the Gfinity League, you know, now that they've come, gone away, they can come back and you know lend that expertise to the the teams competing in that league. It it's all it helps build um, you know better players in our local in our local communities. Yeah, absolutely, and you know it it helps that it's Rocket League. I mean, Rocket League is is just a lot of fun to watch, and uh, yeah, I mean, the Chiefs are really really good at it. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. So speaking of local teams taking it to the world and uh, putting on some good shows overseas, uh, we're looking, taking a look at the Zotac Cup uh, in, in CSGO, which saw uh, Order uh, taking on some of the, the big names in Asia. Yeah, so the, it was the Zotac Cup Masters Asia <laughs> Pacific Regional Finals. Uh, the name's definitely getting out of control, but uh, yeah, Order, Order were over there. Um, 
Most importantly, they were taking on MVP PK, who are a spectacular team. Yeah. Uh, probably, the, you know, after China, Chinese teams, uh, the top ranked Asia Pacific teams. And uh, yeah, they, they are, you know, fantastic competition. It was uh, a little bit odd the way it was run. There was a lot of uh, mix ups. There were a couple of name mix ups along the way <laughs> and, uh, and stuff like that. But um, most, like, the oddest was uh, there was a bracketing. I don't know, snafu. It must have been a snafu. But uh, yeah, MVP and, and Order were both in the same bracket. And uh, so they went up colliding in the semifinals. And every other game apart from that one was a trouncing. Uh, but our clip is from that game. So let's have a look at it. Let's have a look now. But Solo, still lingering on at the A site, pummels back another. It falls to Lyaz, 10 seconds left. He is going to desperately try to get himself into the A site, and with that kill, he has actually managed to get this bomb down. The retake is on, the clutch unfolding. And it is just Glow and Zeph Hugo on the other side. One flashbang for Glow. They both have kits, and they're coming in from separate directions. Lyaz, he's going to play over towards Long. This is a good position because anybody that flanks you from bathrooms has to come around this corner up close and the shadow will give you away. Unless the peak comes in from bank simultaneously, he could line up these shots, but both players are already onto the bomb site, and Lyaz now has gunned this down to the 1v1. Glow comes in and sure enough, the clutch is there. Order again. Yeah, and like to see a local team like take it to you know one of, if not the best you know, in this category, it's I mean, pretty outstanding. Yeah, like MVP, PK are excellent. They're only getting better. And uh, yeah, order, you know, they could have won. I mean, it went 2-1. Mm. And uh, it's it's always easy to armchair coach uh, yeah. the call from the sidelines. But uh, what we do best here at the podium. That is exactly what we do best. Uh, they should have won game three. I yeah. was gutted when they didn't. But uh, it, was, it was super close. And you could tell MVP were locked in and keen on getting the win. So... Uh, yeah, they, they dropped out, but uh, they, they are... It was a great show, and, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that clip, Leah's three kills. Oh, man, he, it couldn't have been better. It was awesome. He played it so smooth. So there you have it, folks. Lots of great action from across the world of esports this week. You know, we've got more coming up. With Gfinity, we'll be in, in week three. Uh, the OPL will have its second week. So, so lots of great stuff going on there. Of course, E3 is on at the moment. And there's lots of other gaming news coming out. But one thing in particular which got my attention, uh, because I'm a massive fan of the series um, for, for other reasons, but Fallout has announced that it's going with a, you know, a new multiplayer survival mode which is not really that surprising because everyone's doing it, right? But sure. So what do you, do you think that indicates that it's, um, it's got ambitions to head into the competitive space? I mean, I, I think a survival, if, if they do have ambitions, survival modes might not be their best yeah. avenue. You know? I, mean, I mean, and they've got better franchises for it, right? They've already got Quake. They could give that some more love. Doom, uh, they announced a new Doom. They yeah. could do something there as well. Uh, you know, I, I think if they did a survival... I, I can't even imagine how a survival esport might work yeah. necessarily, but uh, I bet it'd be like good to watch. It'd just take twenty four hours for a single match, you know. Um, <laughs> well, but you know, like the competitive sports which take longer than twenty four hours, so it could be something. You, you know, I think at the moment you need something that's a bit different, like it's something yeah. that's a bit out there. And you know, whether you tune in for the full twenty four hours or not <laughs> remains to be seen. Fallout seventy six hour, like the Le Mans. There we go. But for seventy six hours. You saw it here first, folks. Copyright <laughs> the podium. Uh, we'll be tracking that uh, for the next six years as it goes into development. Um, but if you don't have that kind of patience and you want to just know what's happening uh, in the world of esports, you know where to go. We'll be right here next week. Uh, see you then.